I got my degree in counseling because it was a whole lot cheaper than therapy. <laughs> yeah, I'm Kim Curley. I'm from San Antonio, Texas, everybody. Yeah, I'm a Texas girl. I used to be a teacher in San Antonio, Texas. I used to teach eighth grade English. That's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20 year olds. That was a great time. Kids these days, I think they're getting smarter. They're a little different. They're getting smarter, but you know what? Take away their calculators. They can't do math. When did math become magic, people? I went to the store and I bought something with cash. It was $7.53. So I gave him a 20, two ones, and 53 cents. The kid goes, you're giving me too much money. He's giving it back. He got kind of indignant. <laughs> giving me back the money. Take this $2, I don't need it. And I said, put it in your machine and watch what happens. <laughs> when he did, he looked at me like this. <gasps> I felt like Chris Angel's mother. I just wanted to levitate and float away. <sighs> Those of you who don't know what I got, I got $15 even back. That's what I did. Don't get out your calculators, put them back. I'm also a, a counselor. I'm a stand-up comic and a counselor. Does that not scream I have issues? Doesn't it? I'm a, ther I, I'm a licensed therapist. You can see me after the show if you wanna talk about stuff. We, we can do that. I got my degree in counseling because it was a whole lot cheaper than therapy. <laughs> I was getting better at it than the therapist, so they started asking me a bunch of questions. How'd you deal with that? Well, I did this. Well, oh my gosh, that's great. Yeah, I know, I know. I enjoy my neighborhood, I have a really nice neighborhood, but yesterday we did our recycling and everybody takes out the recycling bins and my, my neighbor to the right of me, she's bragging all the time about how her recycle is so much bigger than everybody else's. She goes, I'm an aggressive recycler. I'm green, I'm an aggressive recycler. And I'm going, no, you're just a heavy drinker. <laughs> yeah. She went out with this guy and he was in our neighborhood and he came over and talked to me about it. He goes, my goodness, I, I'm telling you, $100 into the date, she's not even slurring her words. I asked her, what are you, a German swimmer? I mean, what? <laughs> she is. So, that's pretty cool. I love college. I want to go back to college. I got my master's. I really want my doctorate. I just want to keep, I love it, but it's so expensive. I have a new hero. Her name is Amy Creighton. This woman is 89 years old and just graduated with her bachelor's degree. 89. Yeah, they asked her, what are you gonna do now, Amy? And she said, what? <laughs> you know what Amy did? She borrowed more money and she's going for a master's degree. Good for you, Amy. You know what? You may not have to pay back those student loans. I'd do the same thing. Just rack them all up. Yeah, I'll take the full amount, government. <laughs> Amy. So I'm married, I've been married very long. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. You know, it's a big decision. When he moved in and he's laying next to me, I had that thought, oh, crumb. He's here. I wonder when he's gonna go home. <laughs> You're kind of stuck with each other. That's a big decision. He has sleep apnea though. Every now and then he quits breathing. <gasps> And I'm thinking, well, that might be my out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's a nice guy. I love this guy. He's great. Of course I love him, right? You know, so. Yeah, they, romance is real important in a relationship. On an average day, if you've been married for a while, let me hear from my married folks. Who's married in the house tonight? <laughs> oh, yeah. There we are. Anybody dating on a date night right now? Notice the married people didn't clap along with that. <laughs> Listen, married people, if you get showered and, and you put clothes on that are kind of nice, call it a date. <laughs> if you're going to the grocery store and you put on good shoes, you know, whatever, call it a date. You can date too. You can be just as happy as those people. <laughs> on an average day, 
uh, for the married couple who've been married for a while, a man speaks about 2,000 words. A woman speaks about eight. Yeah. Now, when you're dating, and we heard the exuberance there, on, on the men increase what they say to us 12,000 words during the dating process men speak to us in a day. Women have to, we have to accommodate that. We go down to five, 12,000 to five. You men, oh my goodness. <laughs> talk, 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 talk. You get married, 2,000. That's right. Because you're being romantic. It's the romantic phase. And romance is very important, isn't it? Yes, yes. I love romance. I love Romeo and Juliet. That's one of the most romantic plays, even though they die at the end. They said some pretty cool stuff to each other. The first time Romeo, well, let, let, me, let, me, let me just backtrack for a second. I knew that in my relationship right now, the romance was pretty much gonna have to be worked on when I heard this. Hey, Kim, I just cut one. I can't even stand the smell of this one myself. You better open up some windows because it's pretty bad. And come in here and smell it, because I think I'm sick. I'm like, I'm not a fartologist. I'm not going to come in there and smell it. We're in our 50s and had hot dogs the night before. Maybe that's it. No romance at that point. That's awful. Romeo and Joy. So, so. Romeo sees Juliet at a party and he says to his friends, and it was a masquerade party, he sees her and he says to his friends, did my heart love until now? I swear for sight, I ne'er saw true beauty until this night. She comes out on a balcony, he says, but soft, what light through yonder window breaks is the east and Juliet's the sun. My life with this man is more like this. Romeo, Romeo. Where fought thou now, Romeo? <laughs> I seeth thou not, yet smelleth thou in every chamber. For thou dost reek, Romeo. <laughs> and if Romeo were to have that happen, I think he would say something like this, but soft. A wind from down under doth break. <laughs> Help me create a gentle breeze from the east, for the smell is offensive even unto me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the lowest form of comedy is the fart joke. The highest form of theatrical performance is Shakespeare. And they collided in front of you tonight, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My eight-year-old grandson loves that joke. He doesn't know anything about Romeo and Juliet, but hearing grandma say fart is so much fun. <laughs> He's not allowed to say it right now. Because <laughs> he overused it, I think. Little boys who are eight, that's so fun. <laughs> I met my man online, did the online dating thing. I loved online dating. I thought it was great. I feel judgment. <laughs> I love sitting in my room at night going shopping for a man. Is that not just the best? I love that. It's how I shopped for all of my Christmas presents too. It is so, it's a new thing, it's awesome. So I think that one man wrote a profile and every man has copied that first guy's profile because they're all pretty much the same. I want a woman who can go from evening wear to blue jeans. They all say that. We can change our clothes, guys. I don't know if you knew that, but we can. <laughs> I want a woman who likes to travel, but I don't want a woman with baggage. <laughs> I know that's a stupid thing to put together, people, but that's what they say. How can I travel if I don't have baggage? <laughs> Go with me on this. <laughs> Truth is, we all have baggage. We all have baggage. I'm down to a carry-on. <laughs> Thank you. What a strange thing to get applause for. Good for you, counselor, <laughs> comic. You're crazy, and you're down to a carry-on. Yes, I am. I know what's in there. Sometimes I take stuff out, put new stuff in there. 
I got it under control. We all have baggage though, every one of us. We're human beings, we're not perfect, you know? Men have baggage, they just don't like to admit they have baggage. It's just that they have space bags. <laughs> you seen the space bags commercial where it's like all this stuff and you suck the emotion out of it? <laughs> and you're down with little thin crispy wafers <laughs> that you don't dare break open while you're driving in the car and someone pulls out in front of you. <laughs> Where'd you get your license? <laughs> yeah. Really cool thing. They did, they, I think they spent like $250,000 on this survey. They did a survey on how many times a day men and women nag at each other. What? Women, how, many, how, many, how many times a day do you think a woman in her, in, in, nags at her husband? Anybody want to throw out a number? Y'all were laughing more at that guy than, what'd he say? No. No. <laughs> no one has a guess? How many times does a woman nag? Oh, this is date night, married night. No one wants to say. I'm not gonna speak a word. Okay, well, you're not gonna play along, are you? It's three. Three. Not a bad number. Most ladies are going, really? <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> How many times a day do you think a man nags that they $250,000 survey found out? Who said that? <laughs> You're absolutely correct, sir. It's zero. $250,000 and it's like, men don't nag. <laughs> you know who did it? That guy over there did the study. <laughs> Maybe that guy and that guy with the beard and the hat, and they're like, hey, okay, we'll do it. <laughs> We're gonna watch a couple. They put you in between this mirror and you just watched them all day. It's like, what'd she just say to him? She said, take out the trash? <laughs> what a nagging woman, I'd say. <laughs> he told her to do the dishes? What? That is so cool, what? that's a good suggestion. <laughs> They've been sitting there all day. Not fair, not fair. <laughs> oh gosh, the other day we were driving by a Blockbuster, old Blockbuster building that you could tell was a Blockbuster building. Tumbleweeds are going by it. <laughs> it's so sad. And my husband says, man, I wonder what's next. I wonder what's gonna be obsolete next. So many changes in our society. And all of a sudden Siri answered, people. <laughs> You know what's obsolete? Screen doors are obsolete. No one builds a house and say, make sure you put that nice wooden screen door on the front. <laughs> no, we don't put screen doors. We don't open our front door and let people see in. That's scary. No one even comes over to our house anymore unless they're, they have to let you know they're coming. No one just stops by. Even the FedEx guy knows it's a dangerous thing when they come up and ring the doorbell. You ever notice how fast they run? Like, oh. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when someone rings the doorbell, it's like, get the gun! <laughs> no one's coming over. Screen doors. I remember when I was growing up with the screen door, we'd go to bed at night and my mom would go, did you lock the screen door? <laughs> we had that little lever. Yes, it's locked. We're safe from all. Brains <laughs> come right through. <laughs> one time we had, we, we brought old pictures into one of the classes I was teaching and, and I had a picture of me on the telephone, you know, and they were all laughing. Oh, Miss Curly, your phone was attached to the wall. <laughs> well, you know, that's why I brought it in because I wanted him to see it because I thought it was pretty cool. You know, remember running to the phone and you had stand and when you had to go to the bathroom, you dangled it and you went to the bathroom. <laughs> Well, I had a friend who had a phone on the wall, but she had a 50-foot cord. And I used to be so jealous, I thought they were rich. She'd go, guess where I am right now? I'd go, I don't know, where are you? She says, in the bathroom. That is so cool. You're rich. 
So I'm 57 years old, and um, I wore this dress tonight because I'm 57 years old and I deserve it. And so, yeah. I'm shiny. I even have on glittery eye. It's, it's awesome. I'm just so excited about this. So the thing is, I think I have it going on for 57. You know, men are still looking at me. They're all over 75, but they're taking a good look, so. <laughs> Menopause was tough. Oh my God, I've been taking hormones for 12 years. You know why I've been taking hormones for 12 years? For the safety of others. That's why I'm taking hormones. They don't want me to go off those things. I knew I was going through menopause when I had my nails done one day. And um, so I picked the mood nail polish. I thought that was really cool because it changes colors with your mood. I grew up when mood rings were awesome. You know, yay, I wanted that done. So I got it done. Three hours later, I'm walking with my sister and, I, and she goes, oh, look at your hands, let's see what color. I looked at my fingers, every finger on, oh, it was a different color. <laughs> every single one was a different color. <laughs> oh my gosh, I don't even know how I feel. <laughs> What's happening to me? I didn't have biofeedback back then, I didn't know what to do. You know, it's like this, it was horrible. Hot flashes, the worst thing ever. Hot flashes. I wish hot flashes burned calories. <laughs> when a woman's standing there sweating, it's like, oh, God love her. <laughs> they don't, they don't burn calories. If they did, I'd be much more cover girl than dove girl. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. I burn as many calories in a day as a 16 year old boy does sneezing. That's how bad it is at this age. It's like, achoo. I'm like, oh, shut up. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Because I'm having water for lunch. <laughs> yep. You know, the, the thing about hot flashes too, is that um, I started menopause and the hot flashes were really bad. And I was thinking at that point, um, that's the reason why women don't have babies after menopause, because the eggs that we did have left were pretty much hard boiled at the first hot flash. <laughs> Over. <laughs> Done. So I wrote a song about it and we're gonna sing it together because y'all are a fun group tonight. <laughs> it's called Estrogen and it's sung to the tune of Yesterday by Paul McCartney. You'll know your part, right guys? You know that song, everybody knows this song. So you'll know your part. You gonna do this with me? Yes? Yeah! You're a fun crowd, that's why. We're gonna go out after this, yeah! Okay, here we go. Estrogen, my ovaries make it only now and then. Look, I'm getting grandma's bearded double chin. Oh, I believe. Estrogen, yeah, all right. Suddenly, I am twice the girl I used to be. I don't want a hysterectomy or hormone replacement therapy. Why do I sweat in my sleep, have weird dreams? I couldn't say. I say lots of things wrong, and now I long for estrogen. Estrogen, yeah! My ovaries make it only now and then, and I am getting a hot flash again. Big emotional ending, oh, I believe in estrogen. Mm -hmm. That was good. This guy in the front, like, I don't want to sing this song about your ovaries. It's making me uncomfortable. You have a mother, now you know what she's going through. Sing her that song and put her to bed. Oh, I believe in estrogen. <laughs> yeah. You know, in marriage, this is another study that came out. You know, I'm a, I, I'm a counselor, I really am. And you know, I'm all about getting life right. I wanna get life right. I wanna be happy. I want these things. I want these things for everybody. And I have friends who tell me everything. I had a friend that just came to me and she says, oh my gosh, I just got engaged and it was the worst proposal ever. 
her boyfriend, now fiance, because she said yes, <laughs> brought in a bag, put it on the kitchen counter and said, there you go. <laughs> yeah. She took it out and it's a beautiful, beautiful engagement ring. It's gorgeous. So she looked at him and she said, will you at least ask me? And she handed him the ring. He took the ring, held it towards her and he says, do you promise not to change? See, the guys are all thinking, well, that's pretty much what I was thinking. I didn't say it. <laughs> Men don't want us to change, but the truth is, ladies, we change every five minutes. We're a different person. It's the way we are. It's great, it's fun, go with the flow. And you know what the other truth is? Is that the one thing women want in their man is for them to change. But men don't change. They stay the same. You're not gonna change them. How many times did your mother tell you that, ladies, huh? You're not gonna change them because she tried. <laughs> the words of wisdom. There are men here tonight still wearing clothes from junior high. Come on, you know that's true. <laughs> I go in my husband's closet and I take stuff out and he doesn't even know I got rid of it for months. He doesn't even know. But it had to go. <sighs> hey, where'd that yellow shirt go? Got it in high school. Where is it? It's my favorite. I don't know. I don't know where it is. They say that it takes 26 years into the marriage before you finally feel true joy, true love, and true contentment. 26 years. Yeah, swallow that one, people, huh? <laughs> I had to, I'm newlywed, 57. I'm never gonna feel love, joy, and contentment. <laughs> if I do, it's gonna be on my deathbed, isn't it? I love you so much. <laughs> Taking that with me to heaven. <laughs> We're so different. You know, you know, the menopausal brain for a female, we become more logical after it's all done. You know, our, our corpus callosum gets a little burn up. You know, we're just, we're done with all that. Our, our super highway kind of goes away. We, we get more, we were more like men. We become more like men. We're not very nice pretty much for the most part. Um, and men, their testosterone levels decrease as you get older and you get nicer. I think there's a Benjamin Button moment that happens sometime in a relationship. We are kind of sitting across from each other. It's like, you finally like, wow, this is a great moment. And then it's over. It's done. You know, you know what happens. You go to the store, go to Walmart, watch the old men and old women. The old man's like wanting to talk to the children. Hey, oh, you could hear some kids. And the woman's going, stop it. You're making a fool out of yourself. I hate her. <laughs> so I occasionally go on diets. I ride a bike. I'm a road cyclist. I ride a bike. Um, I just rode 100 miles in October. Thank you very much. Live through that one. Yeah. Helps keep the weight off. I know, I know when it's time to diet when I have the chub rub thing happening between my legs, you know? <laughs> Put on a pair of spandex, go for a run. <laughs> Don't sit in dry grass after a short run like that. For fear of fire. <laughs> I'm Italian and I'm Irish. I like to eat. And uh, when I had my first baby, I gained 70 pounds with her. <laughs> Listen to the judge. <laughs> yeah, I lost it. <laughs> it's a long time ago. But it was horrible when she was born because I had this child and I asked, is she okay? Yes, she's fine. Everything looks good. Yay. Well, how much does she weigh? <laughs> and she turns around and she goes, oh, she's so healthy. She's beautiful. She's six pounds, three ounces. <laughs> Six pounds, three ounces? <laughs> oh my God, I started to cry. <laughs> I'm like, cut me open. There's gotta be like four in there, come on. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> she was it. 
She's always been little. She's real little. She's so little. I have a friend. Well, she's not really a friend. <laughs> she's not. She was for a while. But she's small. And she would always say, oh, I can't eat any more of this salad because I'm so little. <laughs> Anybody have a friend like that? Like, I'm like, hi, I'm, I'm Godzilla, right? Okay. <laughs> She would always do that. She would attribute all the wonderful things that she did to being little. I did all of my Christmas shopping because I'm so little in July. <laughs> I did my taxes early because I'm so little. <laughs> I'm surprised you can even see me because I'm so little. <laughs> I don't anymore. I blocked her. If I could turn back time, if I could find a way. Ladies and gentlemen, Barbara Streisand, thank you so much. <laughs> Had one, yes, yeah, so just share. I know that's part of the joke. It's not over yet. Barbara Streisand needs to come back with a really cool tour. I love Barbara Streisand when she did A Star Is Born in the 70s. I want her to do rock and roll again. And I think Barbara Streisand needs to do a tour across America like Barbara Streisand sings Pink Floyd's The Wall. <laughs> hello, 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 is there anybody out there? Smile if you can see me. Is there anyone at home? How can you eat your pudding if you don't eat your meat? Thank you. Barbara Streisand sings Pink Floyd. An impersonation that everyone can do, everyone can do this. Do this, and I'm telling you, you're gonna be the hit. Arnold Schwarzenegger is the easiest impersonation, right? Get out of here, shut up. Right? Arnold Schwarzenegger singing children's songs. The wheels on the bus go round and round. That's all they do is go round and round. Stop the bus, get off the bus. You don't know where the wheels are taking you. He can sing Christmas carols. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Shoot him. When I was teaching eighth grade one year, the kids all knew I could do some impersonations. They're not great, but you know, hey, when you're, when you're 12, that's awesome. <laughs> Teacher's so cool. So that kid walks up and he goes, Miss Curley, we've all talked about it, and if we pass this test and all of us get A's on the test, will you teach an entire class in droopy dog voice? <laughs> Those little kids did it. <laughs> I had to stay, that was the hardest 55 minutes of my life. I was teaching double negatives, which is perfect for Droopy Dog. And those of you who don't know Droopy Dog, check them out later. I'm pretty much gonna nail Droopy Dog because I did 55 minutes of Droopy Dog one day. It was like, okay. <laughs> so if you say two things that are Negative. <laughs> it's really a positive. <laughs> you need to sit down. I said sit down. <laughs> I don't have an end to this at all. <laughs> <sighs> so I have two grown kids now. My kids are 35 and 33 years old. I love the fact that they're doing well. I feel very blessed and honored to have these kids in my life. I'm having to navigate new waters. You know, how do I talk to them now? How do I ask them for money? <laughs> it's not that I need it. It's just that they took from me for so many years. <laughs> right? Yeah. That, uh, heck yeah. I go to lunch or dinner with them and I just wait when the check comes out. It's uncomfortable for us all. <laughs> so much fun. I had my mother's curse. Now, the mother's curse is someday you'll have a child just like you. Who in here received the mother's curse someday? Yeah. 
Yeah. And you will, if you haven't, you will. It's a very powerful tool. My mother started to give me the mother's curse when I turned 13. It was day in, day out. It was constant. She would just see me, oh, someday, someday, you'll know what you've put me through. She didn't stop. She started when I was 13 and she didn't stop giving me the curse until I left home at 14. It was just <laughs> nonstop. So I had these kids and I had a child just like me. She even looks just like me. And I'm thinking, okay, uh, this is crazy because we don't get along. It was insane. We had to go to therapy. It was horrible. Therapists, you know, giving us all these things. It didn't work. Nothing worked. I don't know what it is, but when your kids turn into teenagers, Satan moves into the house. That's what happens. <laughs> I go to wake up my kids in the morning. I'd open up the door and go, girls, get up. It's time to go to school. And I'd hear five more minutes. <laughs> We need five more minutes. Turn off the light, the light hurts our eyes. We're not going to school today, mother, we're sick. <sighs> Where are my beautiful little girls? Teenagers are like cats that come into your house and lay around on dirty clothes. And they look at you like, what the heck are you doing here? You know what, if you don't feed cats, they go to somebody else's house. <laughs> Teenagers do the same thing. What's for dinner tonight? Nothing. Okay, I'm just gonna stay here, okay. <laughs> I want you to know if you let that go on too long, it's a felony. <laughs> just saying. They actually Mon it, monster drinks are marketed to teenagers. Why do they need extra energy? What is up with that? Do they need extra energy to shift on the couch? Yeah. Look for the remote. What the heck? So I have this kid who's just like me. And I just, I, I gave up. I gave up even telling her to clean her room. It was horrible. I just got to the point where I, push open the door and put my head out and go, ah, and then shut the door. <laughs> she would just roll her eyes. <laughs> Therapist told us to communicate as best we could. <laughs> so this, this child has five of her friends over, little cat friends, <laughs> just slithering around on her dirty clothes in her dirty room. And I'm thinking, you know what? This is the day. She's 15 at the time. I said, I'm gonna do it. I am gonna give her the curse. I am gonna give her the mother's curse. I'm gonna do it once. So I went into my room and I put on my purple fairy outfit, which I keep for other reasons, and, but it's really nice. <laughs> it's got big wings. Sweet, it is sweet. I had some glitter and I had, I had this scepter thing, you know? So I shove open her door and I go in her room and I start throwing glitter around and her friends are like, oh, Hi, Miss Curly. <laughs> Shannon, your mom's a purple fairy. <laughs> and she's playing guitar on her bed. And I took the scepter and I pointed it right at her, but I aimed it towards her ovaries as best I could. <laughs> and I said, someday you'll have a child just like you and you'll know all the hell you put me through. And you're And I ran out. Yes. She just got married. She's been married a year, and they're talking about their first baby. They want to get pregnant. And I'm so excited, because it's going to happen. The curse is real, people. It's real. She's going to be calling me up someday, Mom, you know what? This child is driving me crazy. Really? <laughs> Are you nothing but an ATM, ATM? <laughs> See how I brought that around? ATM, no, okay. <laughs> yeah, y'all been fun. Thank you so much for everything. It's been great. Had a good time tonight. Earlier, I was an army wife, so I, I have to ask, where are the veterans in the house tonight? Where are our veterans? No, oh, got to clap, 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 clap. There are quite a few, quite a few. 
Let's hear it for our veterans in the house tonight. Yes. Now, they would much rather have dollars thrown at them than <laughs> applause. Yes, exactly. Here you go, honey. Here's a 50. God. That's what they need because I remember how we were so poor. See, I married this guy. They say you marry somebody like your dad. My dad was an Army veteran, 30 years in the Army. He went to uh, Vietnam four times, all of which were voluntary, right? We used to take turns waking up. My, my mom would say, Kim, go wake up your daddy, honey, but remember, don't touch him. <laughs> I know. I just got to the point where I'd fling open the door and go, incoming, and I'd run. <laughs> I'd get in the car, he'd already be there. Oh my gosh, daddy, what are you a ninja? Yes, he was. It's an amazing guy. <laughs> yeah, so we, we lived, uh, it was, he, he was an E-nothing. We lived on this post in Fort Silly, Oklahoma. They always put the military bases in the most beautiful parts of the country. <laughs> there goes my endorsement for uh, Oklahoma. Sorry about that. <clears throat> but my daughter was born in Fort Silly, Oklahoma. I was pregnant when I was there. We, we were so poor. I would drive around the base and sometimes just sit in front of the general's big old beautiful house and just imagine what they had inside. I don't know, heat, <laughs> meat, just groceries in general. It was a tough time. Yep. We drove what I called the Pentecostal putt-putt. It was an old Dodge Dart. <laughs> We call it the Pentecostal, Pentecostal putt-putt. We called it Lazarus. <laughs> because we knew divine intervention was helping this car start every single time. We were so poor, we couldn't afford to fix it if it broke down. It was like, please, just start one more night. <laughs> That car ran on prayer. It was great. So I'm eight and a half months pregnant, and I'm living in Fort Sill, Oklahoma. And it was a tough time, but it was a good time, you know? We're on, Fort Sil we're, we're on base at Fort Sill, and I took my um, girlfriend who lived next door to me, and we were gonna go to the commissary and get some <laughs> groceries to share, pretty much. So she was, she was sitting there, and I'm eight and a half months pregnant, and I'm in the, I'm in the Dodge Dart Pentecostal Putt-Putt Lazarus, and I stop at a red light, and two soldiers were right there. They're probably as close as you guys are to me. And I'm in the car, <laughs> And the guy, guy looks at me, he does that. That's teenager for, hey, what's up? <laughs> I was 26 at the time. So I was, you know, I was, I was pretty. And I'm sitting there. <laughs> he goes, where have you been all my life? <laughs> he doesn't know I'm pregnant. <laughs> and my girlfriend goes, oh my gosh, he would just die. And I was already getting out of the car. I got out of the car. I went, where have you been for the last eight and a half months, huh? Where have you been? I've been driving all over looking for you, and there you are! The guy that was sitting with him, he, he, he took two steps away and goes, dude, you know 